Hello, my name is Kathy Fuller and author of the book, Essential Oils and Household Pets. Uh, to provide you a little background, I taught in public schools for 33 years, various courses in biology, have a degree in biology as well as a master's of science in ecology. And then I also lectured at the State University of New York in biology for several years until I fully retired from teaching. And um, in collaboration with Connie McDaniel, we've written several books. And um, the latest book that um, I decided to write was Essential Oils and Household Pets, A Holistic Support. And I do wanna mention that when I began research on this book several years ago, there was quite a paucity of information um, uh, using essential oils with pets. And so, uh, you know, it was a kind of a necessary endeavor and an enlightening one for me. The modern world and household pets, uh, as all of you know, um, we, in our modern world, we have certainly introduced ourselves and, and anyone that we bring into our home to um, substances that um, have come about, I think, in, in, in living in a modern world. And some of these substances are quite toxic. And so um, you have to become knowledgeable about what those, sub those substances are. And, you know, sometimes we can can do things, we can make changes. And, and so I want to make you aware of those changes that we can make. And they certainly would be uh, health, more healthy in terms of, of humans, but, as, but also th those other animals that we bring into our home in which the home is not necessarily their natural habitat. Let's start first with our common household products. Uh, and those would include cleaning products, uh, shampoos, air fresheners, mothballs, um, also green space biocides. And when I use the term biocide, you need to think of a biocide as a killing agent. That would be its purpose. Uh, in terms of our pets, we tend to use flea and tick control agents. And those are actually a, another category of biocides or killing agents. And then we, we come into some of those substances that are part of our modern, modern world in terms of building agents uh, such as, that come in with plywood and other flooring. But formaldehyde is a killing agent. Um, uh, formaldehyde is often used in furniture and in, in bedding. And so uh, humans and the animals that we bring into our house are certainly exposed to that. That one we really can't do a whole lot about, but it, it's certainly present. Uh, especially in terms of our pets, we need to be aware that antif antifreeze, uh, which can often end up on garage floors and driveways, is a, a very much a hazard to our pets because it, it, it's sweet and so pets can lick that. And then um, if you live in a more northern climate, maybe you use de-icing salts on your driveways and your walks and those are uh, rather hazardous to um, paw pads. And then unfortunate hazards that our pets could come across in terms of a house if we leave them on a counter is uh, there are foodstuffs that we need to be aware of and, and certainly medicines uh, that can be hazards for our pets. But again, I wanna emphasize that we need to, uh, when we think of replacements, let's replace those substances as consumers that we bring in. And, and then we need to find alternatives that are better for their health as well as our health. So let's start with that category of cleaning agents. And, you know, in, in terms, I've been using Young Living Thieves. Um, that, that's probably the, the one substance in terms of Young Living that I began uh, using years ago. And I did that because my, my own daughter um, is an asthmatic and she had uh, one of her triggers was bleach. And so I quit using bleach early on. And so I needed to adopt it a different way to clean. And of course, thieves gave me that opportunity of a, an alternative that was a wonderful alternative in terms of bringing essential oils into the home um, and a very effective way to, to clean the home. And of course, with Young Living Thieves, you have all kinds of 
products that can address um, uh, multiple uses within the home. And then a second category you have to be aware of, especially with your pets, is uh, America's love of air fresheners. And these products um, certainly emanate a, a lot of um, odors. Well, they, they have a, an odor, but they, they bring phthalates and other endocrine disruptors into the home that, that are not only bad for humans, but they're also bad for pets. And I want you to always think about that. Your pets are animals, we are animals. And so if they're bad for you, they're gonna be bad for your pet as well. And so again, you need to, okay, instead of purchasing an air freshener or a cleaning product that might have something harmful in it, look, you need to search for an alternative. And again, Young Living addresses that because there's a different way to freshen your home. There's a different way to clean your home. And we want to incorporate a, le a less toxic exposure for all the inhabitants of the home. And then a third category, let's address this biocide because I think that's something that, that's a term that we especially use with pets. Um, all of us are aware that pets can be sources of fleas or they can be sources of ticks and, and we don't want to have that exposure. We don't want it for them and we don't want it for us. But do we necessarily have to revert to um, either a pharmaceutical agent or, or a, a, another chemical agent that is toxic that not only exposes our pet to the toxin, but even, even our children or babies um, I think of that when you think of, begin to think of flea collars, flea and tick collars, you touch those. Maybe you don't wash your hands, you touch your mouth, your child touches those. So those are, those are agents that you have to think about. And again, knowing that they're harmful, don't, bring, don't purchase them, don't bring them into your home. Look for, look for an alternative, more healthy path. Essential oils um, are natural derivatives from aromatic plant species. And uh, let's consider why a plant, these aromatic plants might produce these. You know, plants live a different, they have a different strategy for survival than animals. They don't move, we move. Uh, and so they, they produce these molecules of communication and also molecules of immunity uh, for an organism that can't move, that can't just pick up and travel uh, when something is harmful or something that they need to do that's helpful to them. Um, I always think of, of these chemicals, again, as part of the homeostasis of the plant. And another thing you have to think about is, you know, animals and plants have certainly co-evolved co through time. We, we depend on plants and plants also depend on animals. And let's just look at some of those uh, characteristics. Plants have to pollinate to reproduce. So they produce pollen that can be air distributed. It can also fall on an animal and be distributed in that way. That's the importance of bees and insects. They're, the key pollinators are animals for plants. Uh, then in terms of seed dispersal, uh, seed dispersal, you know, you pollinate and then you produce a flower and then you produce a seed, but then the seed has to be dispersed. And we know that animals are very important as far as uh, dispersal agents for plants to, to take those seeds and remove them away from the, the adult plants so that, that that seed can germinate and have a greater chance for survival. Plants also use uh, their, if they produce um, essential oils, they're using those oils uh, perhaps to ward off predators, whether it's herbivores who might eat them or insects that might come along, do the same thing. So it's a defense mechanism. Um, in terms of, of beginning to see where plants are important for animals, uh, we know that they're very important. Uh, animals are important for cycling of plant nutrients. Um, and then also plants, of course, through photosynthesis and respiration, they're very important to the carbon oxygen balance of the earth. And that's important to us because animals, of course, uh, respire oxygen and respire out carbon dioxide, which plants use during photosynthesis. And then, of course, animals, we need our plants for food. Uh, we use plants in terms of wood for shelter. We depend on plants for clothing, whether you're talking about cotton or hemp. We know that plants are extraordinarily important in terms of medicines. 
And then we get back to this, this the, the reason we're talking about aromatic plants, their ability to use essential oils as molecules of communication and immunity. So we, they produce scents. And as mentioned with pollination and seed dispersal, perhaps those scents are attractants. In terms of defense against predation, perhaps those scents are more inhibitory. And so we can use those scents for the same purpose. Um, and that's why many of us are, use essential oils as attractants or in, an inhibitory mechanism. Um, of course, in preparing this book, I. Uh, took the time to uh, read about Cesar Milan. And one of the things he said that, that really I find appropriate is taking responsibility. When you bring a pet into your home, you are taking responsibility for a living creature that you are bringing into your world. Let's think about, you know, in the past, what, dogs and cats, would they necessarily have wanted to have the modern home as their habitat, the place where they're comfortable. And of course, yeah, it's it's win-win. We feed them, we do other things. Um, but you, you also have to think, the moment you expose your pet to your home, you're exposing them to the other substances that you bring into that home, such as the formaldehyde in a floorboard or in pet bedding, but also those cleaners and those substances that you may use to, to freshen your homes in terms of odors. So, and what, what are the effects of those substances on your pets? Taking responsibility for a living creature you bring into your world. So one of the things I want you to think about is um, we need to learn to be better observers. You know, as a biologist, um, we always teach observation is the first step of the scientific method, and it's true. So, so when you bring uh, an organism or a pet into your home, you need to, to become familiar with that pet. Observe and learn their particular unique behaviors. Those of you that have more than one cat or more than one dog, you know that those two dogs or those two cats or a cat with a dog may show completely different behaviors. And so you need to be aware of each animal's unique standing. Another thing that you need to consider is both with cats and dogs is that their sense of smell is far different and much more discerning to them than yours. Uh, human beings, our number one sense would be our eyesight. It's, ex you know, it's very important. But in terms of our pets, certainly their sense of smell is, is more important to them. And so be aware of that. Um, being four-legged creatures, quadrupeds, their mobility is different, their physiology is different, um, they're smaller normally, uh, so you have to consider body size, you have to consider their respiration rate and their lung capacity. And, and I bring this up because again, if we're talking essential oils and the use of essential oils in the home, then certainly their nasal ability, their breathing and their breathing apparatus being different from yours as a human being is very important. And so lung capacity plays into that. Obviously their food requirements are different. And a big one for me, and, and one I recognize after being um, you know, an owner of pets over the years, they're accelerated aging. And so you have to consider that as well. So account and accommodate for all those differences and, and become a good observer of your pet and their unique behavior. In terms of Young Living, and again, I was first incorporated Young Living to my life by using the Thieves line. Um, it was very, always very important to me that Young Living is a company of integrity, and meaning that they're, they produce oils in which I can depend that they're the best oils that can be produced from seed to seal. And uh, that was a point that was, uh, no matter any of the vets that I referenced in this book, all of the vets said that the oils should be of the highest quality, they should be of the highest integrity, they should and they should be, uh, have the greatest bioactive efficacy. And so 
you know, for, for me, that seed to sell promise that Young Living supplies is very important. So consequently, you want to use an oil of the highest quality if you're going to use it to replace household toxins. Um, many times in the book, I bring up the point that why would you want to bring another adulterated product into your home? And once I use the word adulterated, um, I begin to think of either a low quality chemical or certainly a chemical that I don't want to be exposed to, whether it's considered toxic or not. I'm going to use something. I want it to be of the highest quality. So again, you're going to introduce oils. Please don't introduce an adulterated substance with those oils. And then you can safely say, okay, I'm now going to use these to replace um, other household products that are adulterated and probably contain toxins. Uh, we want to reduce the exposure of our pets and all inhabitants to toxins. So certainly changing how we clean, changing how we uh, take away household odors. And see, those are things as a consumer you can change. I may not be able to change the plywood in my home, but I can certainly change those consumer substances that I bring in for whatever job we're talking about. And that would include that list that I, that I mentioned earlier, like re replacement of biocides, replacement of cleaning products, replacement of air fresheners. And by making those changes, it, I'm making my home healthier for myself and my pet inhabitants. There are veterinarian and recommended oils and there are cautionary oils. So let's look at some of these right now. As far as the recommended oils for dogs and cats, we know that lavender, Roman and German Chamomile, frankincense, cedarwood, and copaiba are excellent oils. Now that's for dogs. For cats, we can use spearmint, frankincense, and I mentioned frankincense because it, it's on both the dog and cat list. So that's that's wonderful. Uh, cardamom, helichrysum, and fennel are also recommended for cats. Now let's look at some of the ailments uh, that we can use these oils for in terms of skin health, Myrrh, rosewood, and carrot seed are all recommended to address skin health issues, whether dogs or cats. Insect inhibitors, this is a big one because this is where we can begin to move away from toxic biocides. So we can use geranium, lemongrass, citronella, and eucalyptus radiata. In terms of digestive health, ginger, ginger is appropriate. If I were going to address a digestive issue in myself, I could use ginger as well as marjoram. And then anti-anxiety, and, and that's a big one because I think most of you know if you have pets, there are certain um, extemporaneous activities, let's say the 4th of July, or let's say someone comes into the home that your pet's not used to, or you have to take a pet to the veterinarian or some other uh, stressful um, moment. And so you can use some, some anti-anxiety, whether you're using misting or whether you're using your, your home diffuser. You can uh, use copaiba, Roman chamomile, frankincense, and lavender. So a lot of commonality in those, in those oils that, that between the top list and the middle list. However, there are cautionary oils. And the first thing I want to mention is some of the cautionary oils are what we call the hot oils or the oils that are high in phenol content. And so those are oils like oregano and thyme, um, both of them. And so if you're going to use those oils, you have to, you have to dilute and you may want to, you may want to use, you know, a, a very high dilution factor, um, but be aware clove, thyme, oregano, cinnamon, um, are, are fit into that high phenol content. And then there's other oils such as wintergreen that you, you need to take care with. This is a great chart. And I would almost encourage you at some point, um, you know, to um, take a picture of the chart or download the chart or do something so that, because this is good, you know, anytime that you're using oils. Um, and a, and a great little comment, less is more, gradual is better, and moderation is wise. So dilution of oils for use with pets is a must. That 
pets generally are much smaller than you. They are of less weight than you. They have the greater nasal openings than you. Um, but it's really the size and, and also the, the difference in uh, nasal capacity than humans. Um, cat skin is very thin uh, compared to your own skin or even your dog skin. So these are all reasons for making sure that you follow a dilution guide as you use essential oils with your pets. And you're gonna base this, and you're gonna see this in, in later slides, you're gonna base this on, on weight, on age. Um, when I say weight, I mean size of animal. Um, there is a difference, of course, between cats and dogs. Cats generally are much smaller in weight than a dog. And so this dilution chart is extremely important. And I tried to make this chart as easy to use as possible. So when you look at it, of course, your strength on the left-hand side is, is more concentrated in oil. And as you go down or, or go to the bottom of the arrow, you notice that your oil strength is going down. And it's pretty easy. If, if I want a, a high strength oil, then I'm gonna use much less of the carrier oil. But if I want a low strength oil, I'm gonna be much higher on my dilution with the carrier oil. So I just advise you to learn how to use a dilution chart. And I think this one is, is user friendly for you. Um, this particular chart, um, which I think is very important, I consulted with Dr. Barbara Fox on this. And this was her recommendation as far as uh, strength of oil with PET. And it's, it's, you see age being important, you see size being important, you see breed being important. Uh, you see the same comment that I mentioned earlier about your, your being careful of using hot oils or, or oils high in phenol content. And then, of course, the same thing at the bottom, you see weight being important with your cats, age as well being important. So um, again, th both of those charts go together. And to know how to dilute, you use the previous chart. But then here's your recommendation for how you're going to, or what strength of oil you're going to use based on size of the animal, uh, age of the animal, even the breed of the animal. Um, notice that the chart in terms of application, um, generally you're going to use inhalation through misting or through diffusion, or you're going to apply topically. And I know that, that Dr. Fox uh, generally does not like to use, um, you know, uh, giving the oil to the dog, uh, to a dog or a cat directly by mouth. Their preference is to use inhalation or topical application. So just be aware of that and you can certainly read that in the book. Now let's talk about two oils in particular. Uh, I call them the new kids on the block, but both of them actually are, are, are related to each other. Copaiba um, is uh, an oil that uh, comes from South America. It's an oil that's very high in beta-caryophylline, beta and that's, that's probably uh, the, the, the critical part of its nature. We know that copaiba is able to interplay with the endocannabinoid system, and this is a system that um, only has received press in, in the last five years. So it's a system we have as well. And we know that it's a system that's very important in terms of a, a homeostatic mechanism. And when I say homeostasis, I mean balance. It's what keeps us kind of revolving around um, um, in a more a, a normal set point. And it helps us to keep ourselves from, from going to extremes. And that's very important. Uh, multiple vets that I reference in the book recommended the use of copaiba with pets. And it's especially helpful to address inflammation, to address gastrointestinal discomfort, uh, musculoskeletal issues, as well as emotional distress. So very important oil to use with pets. And then believe it or not, an oil that kind of pairs with it is CBD. And again, um, you know, this was introduced in Young Living through their nature Nature Ultra line. CBD is, comes from hemp. 
Uh, it also is an oil that is high, again, uh, with beta caryophyllate, and so it interplays well um, with the endocannabinoid system. So these two oils together, very important to address inflammation. And I always say a body that's inflamed is a body in pain. So if you can control inflammation, um, you're gonna do you're gonna do well in terms of uh, of uh, inducing health, good health. Um, unfortunately, with our pets, sometimes inflammation is expressed differently. Um, inflammation can be expressed certainly uh, as skin allergies. So if if you have a pet that is is constantly scratching, rubbing. Um, uh, rubbing so much that you begin to see loss of hair and hot spots in the skin area. Um, I would certainly look at these two oils to begin to address that issue. We also know that allergies can certainly be expressed in digestive discomfort and um, also in, in musculoskeletal issues. Uh, in a study conducted at Cornell, administration of CBD oil twice a day increased the comfort level for the dogs that were suffering from osteoarthritis. Now, again, I mentioned that as I researched this book several years ago, it was very difficult sometimes to come up with studies. Um, now that um, CBD oil is becoming more commonplace, there are certainly more institutions that are beginning to study the effects of CD CBD, uh, whether in use with humans or in use with pets. Copaiba and CBD oils do pair well together. Uh, another uh, vet that I consulted with, Dr. Susan Albright, uh, provides the following observation. Copaiba pairs well with CBD. Both have a great beta caryophylline content that positively interacts with the endocannabinoid receptors of the body. Having used Copaiba alone for years, I now see that my patients experience better results when both copaiba and CBD are used at the same time. Uh, I also wanna mention that it's interesting that dogs actually have more receptors for um, these substances than even the, than humans do in, in the endocannabinoid system. So I would think uh, that's, that's quite telling when an animal actually has more receptors than we do for these substances. So health positivity in using these two oils, um, if you have an active pet, one that, that's a working pet or even a pet that um, um, who's in trials or um, you know, a, a working pet, you certainly want to employ these oils. If you have pets that are recovering from a, a heart, they've been hiking, um, they've been swimming, whatever they might be recovering from, it's good to employ these two oils. Pets that are challenged by aging, it's difficult to get up, or if they get up, perhaps there's a limp. Employ these two oils. Anxious pets, and I went through, you know, those particular, 4th of July, whatever, whatever the condition is, the outside extemporaneous activity that causes your pet to be anxious, use these two oils. And then pets expressing allergic conditions, if you see them itching a lot, scratching a lot. If you see them have digestive issues, certainly these two oils can be used to help address those conditions. Seed to seal premium quality oils. Young Living and Nature's Ultra both uh, are certainly uh, critical in this decision. And what that means is that we, we are aware of the source of the seed. We are aware of the health of the soils that the seeds are planted and grown in. We know that organic methodologies are utilized. See, this is where we don't have to worry about adulteration. We know that these, these oils are as pure as possible. And so you want to use quality oils not only with yourself, but you also want to use those, especially with your pets and not subject them to something that is harmful. Um, we know that both companies, they employ ethical manufacturing processes. They're proud of that. Uh, I'm proud of that. And then one other I want to mention, of course, is uh, number five, Nature's Ultra CBD ut utilizes smart spectrum protocol 
Now, what this means is that um, with the CBD, there is a, an isolate formed in which any substance that is questionable um, is removed. Uh, but we also know that in studies, when CBD isolate is used alone, it's not as effective as when you have the CBD having all of its terpene components available. And so what Young Living has done, they've combined CBD isolate with um, essential oils so that you're basically putting those terpenes back in. And there's a, there's a synergy that occurs between the essential oil key ingredients along with the CBD to make it a more effective product. So good for Young Living and Nature's Altar in coming up with this smart spectrum protocol. Prevention, not intervention, is the best remedy to ensure optimal health, whether for you or your pet. And all of the doctors referenced generally always said, you must have a healthy supportive diet. Your a healthy supportive diet with your pet is the cornerstone of your pet's immunity. Along with that, we wanna make sure we encourage exercise and play. Uh, we want to use intentional targeted touch and massage, and we can certainly use essential oils in that process, and I encourage that. We want to eliminate stress, and we want to plan if we know that there's going to be triggers, stress triggers uh, that are going to occur with your animals. Here, uh, another rationale for using essential oils, whether you're using diffusion or misting, or you're using touch. And then the last one you have total control of as a homeowner and a pet owner, remove and reduce household toxins. And of course, a big one with our pets is to use insect inhibitory oils in lieu of using toxic chemical biocides that I, I don't wanna expose my pets to, but I certainly don't wanna expose inhabit human inhabitants, whether adults or children, to these biocides as well. Pets receive a leg up in life with an immune supportive diet. Um, we can certainly use, and Young Living of course makes many products in which they incorporate essential oils uh, that are nutritional products. And whether it's Sulfurzyme or Nisha Red, um, all of these substances uh, combine the power of essential oils with other beneficial nutrients such as bee pollen or organic sulfur in the form of MSM, spirulina, kelp, which are of course are substances coming from the ocean, glucosamine and chondroitin, and of course, Golgi, wolfberry, Golgi berry. These all create economical supportive um, substances for our pets. Now that we're in March, and of course, depending upon where you live in the United States, perhaps you're already having an insect issue, um, and then that moves north as spring uh, comes along, we do have to be aware of biting insect, the role that fleas, ticks, and other biting insects play in our pet's life. Um, Dr. Barbara Fox reminds us that insects, like all predators, predate the weak. Um, weak animals first, they're easy. And so that's uh, again, why you want to be quite uh, supportive of your animal's uh, natural immunity. And you do that first with diet, but then we can come along and we can be supportive with, through the use of essential oils. So essential oils serve as a natural means to reduce our pet's exposure to those harsh toxic biocide chemicals. In a toxin-free home, change your choice of biocides. Try to, not try, incorporate. Uh, for example, Young Living makes its own insect repellent. And that insect repellent is free of DEET. It's free of parabens, fillers, phthalates, petrochemicals, synthetic preservatives, synthetic fragrances and colorants. So that's how, you know, in a, a healthy home, you want to move away from those toxic uh, red flag chemicals and incorporate something that is, is non-toxic and essential oils fit that bill. To give you an example of how you can do that on your own, here's a uh, just a, a cat and dog tick flea powder. 
uh, recommended by Dr. Nancy Bratt. And she uses four cups of brewer's yeast, which is available. And then to that, she adds 10 drops of citronella, lavender, lemon, geranium, and spikenard. And um, she can put this into a container. She can uh, simply shake it well. And then you're gonna rub that into your pet's coat one tablespoon of powder per 10 pounds of pet's weight. And you can do this every other day. And your pet, and of course that powder not only stays on the fur, but some of that will go down into the skin area and is, is a much better alternative use of, than using a, bio, a chemical biocide either around the neck or spray, uh, con, a commercial spray. Get used to using those insect repellent essential oils such as geranium, citronella, and of course lavender is also good for the skin too, besides being uh, a, a natural repellent. Here's some of the insect inhibitory essential oils. Um, and you can see there's lavender again, it's, you, it can inhibit fleas and crawling bugs. Cedarwood, fleas, mosquitoes, geranium, ticks, lice, and fleas. And then lemongrass as well, mosquitoes, fleas, ticks. Uh, and then eucalyptus radiata for mosquitoes and flies. Um, the, the good news about all of these essential oils, not, o not only are they inhibitory as an odor inhibitant to um, insects, but as mentioned on the previous page, lavender, you know, is very good for skin. And so if it, it, if it moves down into the skin, it can topically soothe just in case your animal has, has a bite from a flea. Um, geranium cools inflamed skin. And generally if, a, if there is an insect bite, there is gonna be a natural response, uh, immune response with some inflammation. And so geranium is a natural cooling agent for that. Uh, and then all of these uh, odors, uh, are calming to your dog. Your, your dog's not going to uh, move their head away. They're not going to walk away. They're going to allow you to use these substances on them and not show an adverse um, reaction. And in fact, in some cases, for example, geranium, it actually relaxes the pet. So your pet's not going to be offended um, by the oil. Other DIY recipes uh, for pets. There's a DIY tick spray. I just happened to live in Minnesota in the uh, summertime. And so we are very well, uh, uh, very aware of ticks. And I even, you know, I would use that tick spray on myself. That's uh, very simple. You wanna use an agent for the oils to disperse into. So you can use witch hazel or you can, um, and witch hazel probably is the oil that I, would use. It's found at the drugstore, at a local drugstore. But there you see the oils again, geran geranium, lemongrass, citronella, eucalyptus radiata, very small amount of melaleuca and a very small amount of peppermint. And of course, I generally, when I'm out working, I will have that spray bottle with me so that I can apply often. Uh, you can use oils as a natural cleanser. And you see the role of, uh, if you move to the right-hand slide here, wound cleanser for cats. You can also find a, a non-odored um, Castile soap, again, generally at the drugstore or maybe at the grocery store. Uh, you're gonna purchase that and you're gonna apply uh, with four ounces of a Castile soap, one drop of Roman chamomile, chamomile with one drop of lavender. And I also tend to, in all of these recipes, give you um, substitution oils, and you can see that in, in this particular recipe. Um, diffusing, you know, think about this. People, as long as we've been using essential oils and we've been using diffusers, our pets have been exp exposed to oils through that, that process. I would recommend that you use water-based diffusers because you have a natural dilution with that. Um, and you want to be, again, aware of that fact that you have with any pet, that pet's probably of a much reduced weight in comparison to human inhabitants in your home. And so um, make sure you, that you do use diffusers and water-based diffuser and that you follow dilution rules as you use these with these pets. If, you're, if your pet doesn't like the odor, they'll simp they're going to leave. And, and you want to supply that in your home. You want to have, you don't necessarily want to diffuse in a closed room. 
if the pet is in the closed room, give your, give your pet an out and they can simply leave if they don't like what you're doing and they will leave. That's their natural response. Um, but if you look at the pet calming diffuser application, again, you're using a water-based diffuser and you can see there's, there's the oils that were suggested earlier. There's a drop of cedar wood with a drop of lavender, with a drop of copaiba and also a drop of stress away. So not a lot of, of uh, you know, this is a, certainly a diluted application for a diffuser. And then if, you, if you're out so that you're not diffusing, so that, but you need a calming mist for your dogs, and you can do this, and again, in a, just a, an atomizer spray bottle, uh, you can use rosemary with Roman chamomile again, one drop of lavender, seven ounces of water, or you, again, you could substitute, well, I would use water in this case, but you, uh, you're gonna put that in an eight ounce spray bottle. If you're gonna uh, put your oils into water only, as a dispersal agent, just make sure you shake before you mist. And that's a good calming. You could do that in the car if you're taking your animal to the vet, for example, maybe you, you use that calming mist um, in, to aerate the car with that particular mixture to try to calm your animal before visiting the vet or groomer, and if that happens to be another stressor. Um, Young Living, of course, <clears throat> has their own pet care products, of which uh, I, I, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of Animal Sense ointment. <laughs> Again, I use that salve on myself to address certain issues, but I've seen it work wonders on minor cuts and scrapes, as well as Lavaderm. Um, those are substances, and I don't even have Lavaderm in, in, in this particular PowerPoint, but it's, it's a fantastic substance to spray onto to wounds. Um, but you have the Animal Scent shampoo, the ointment. Um, I, in the slide earlier where I was talking about dilution, obviously Young Living has their V6 carrier oil, but you can use other carrier oils, whether they're jojoba or fractionated coconut oil. Um, the, important, or the important part of that is you need to, to have a go-to carrier oil uh, so that you dilute your, your essential oils properly. Sulfurzyme, because of its MSM component, it's a, it's a source of organic sulfur. Our body needs sulfur. Sulfur is uh, critical to uh, body functions as well as the production of proteins. So it's a, it's a very good substance to have in your, to support um, nutrition and immunity. And notice how I said that, support nutrition and you will support immunity. Ningxia red um, is, is another substance that certainly can be added to a dog's food um, to, to give a, an additional boost. And your multigreens are a source of bee pollen and spirulina, and those are excellent. So all of these products uh, are hugely supportive in terms of nutrition and immune support for your pets. Uh, here's a case. Um, I, this is a, a young lady, Brittany Boland, who is in the, um, the uh, Bemidji, Minnesota area, and she boards and trains dogs. And of course, I asked many people to supply, um, you know, how they use Young Living uh, with their pets. And she is, um, she actually takes in dogs and of course, um, kennels them um, as a business. And she had this one little French, I believe that's a French bulldog, bulldog named Ruby. And Ruby just wasn't thrilled about having to sleep in a kennel. And in fact, she was just putting up a fuss and, and a verbal fuss. And so Brittany applied Young Living's Peace and Calming and also Tea Away, or I'm going to say Trauma Away oils. And when she did that, she applied them to her hands, which is the proper way to do it. And then she rubbed her hands together and then applied the oil to Ruby's chest fur and along Ruby's back. And a ruby immediately settled down. So it was quite calming. And then she applied a couple of drops of the, the trauma away or tea away on the corners of, of Ruby's kennel bedding. And the house was quiet that night and Ruby was quiet that night. So multiple use of peace and calming with cats and dogs. So every veterinarian that I referenced in essential oil and household pet from many sources, whether it was written or personal communication, the one thing they insisted, again, 
was that your oils have to be of the highest quality for the, for you or your pet to receive the greatest bioactive efficacy. So I encourage you to when you if you're going to bring oils in your home, whether C, whether CBD or essential oils, they should be Young Living and Nature's Ultra. Change what is into what should be. That makes you an advocate for your pet. Change what is into what should be. And so all of these pets encourage you to do that. And I thank you for your time in listening to this and I encourage you the book. <laughs>